Well, hello everybody! You too, Cricket. Welcome to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And in this episode, we're going to cover a few different things. And we're also going to get another entry availability out there, or a three entry availabilities out there, for the seed giveaway somewhere during this video. So uh, pay attention. Don't forget. You have to be a subscriber, so get down there and subscribe. When you click that subscribe button, the only thing that it's going to say is subscribed. It's going to change from the word subscribe to subscribed. And that's it. No cost. Doesn't cost you anything. You're not going to get spammed. I'm not going to be in your email box every day. It's going to be easy. Just do it. All right, everybody. So let's get to homesteading hint number one door building okay now a lot of people out there are going to be building themselves an outhouse like i did here or uh maybe just a tool shed or something like that okay one of my um aggravations i've watched a lot of tv i used to watch little house on the prairie and of course michael landon's house um was always all of the construction was proper in that one but when his uh, youngest daughter got married, the guy that she married, the big blonde haired guy, um, he would open the do front door to his cabin and it always bothered me. There's, there's a brace that people put on the inside of doors or on the inside of a wooden gate, okay? Now, everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of people put it on wrong. They put it from the top down to the bottom like it's supposed to hold this end of the door up. Wrong. All right. It goes from the top down to the lower hinge area. Okay. And now think about that for a minute. What this is doing, that brace is holding that upper crossboard up. It can't come down on that end at all. It can't fall down. Now, if you had it on this side going that way, well, what's going to stop it from wanting the sag and pull the nails out? Nothing, right? This one has to push down, and it's pushing against the area where the bottom hinge is, so it can't go anywhere. So it's a rigid support, and it keeps your door from sagging. Okay, that's number one's tip. Another little tip. When you do have an outhouse, of course, you're going to never want to have odors in your outhouse, right? So, one of the best things you can get is this stuff right here. Hydrated lime. Okay, I keep an old mixing cup in here, and I keep hydrated lime. And if there's ever any ever de detection of any little odor or anything, just open up the seat, sprinkle that around in there, half a cup does it, and it kills all the odors. And it keeps a, makes it uh, pleasant for coming out to use the outhouse and somebody just tried to slam the door shut on me anyway also toilet paper wind blows toilet paper will unroll so i made this little piece here that sits on the toilet paper roll just like that that's all it takes and the toilet paper roll has never unrolled on me in the wind now if i took that off and i set it to one side like that next time i come in here there'll be a spool of toilet paper on the floor and yeah I know some of you going to say why well, use toilet paper why don't you just use water <laughs> okay well you can do that I like my toilet paper and I like the good stuff too I buy Charmin's ultra strong uh, not the ultra soft the ultra strong it's soft I can't tell the difference between the softness of the ultra strong and the ultra soft but this is stronger and you don't end up with any of those little accidents. Another thing, um, disinfectant wipes. Now those do not break down in a sewer or anything like that. So don't throw those down into your, um, your toilet area or anything like that. They will not break down like toilet paper does. Those, I keep a trash bucket in here and I throw those in the trash bucket, and they're great for lighting fires after they dry out. So if you need some paper to get your campfire going or your wood stove fire going, use a disinfectant wipe after it's dried out. 
get get extra uses out of everything that's the way to do it okay these other wipes here those are um actually they are biodegradable and you can uh, put them down the outhouse do not flush them down your toilet ask my neighbor about that he'll tell you uh, another thing i like to do is i i just made a took a little um strap right there and i fastened it to the wall so this will sit in there and i don't have to worry about it blowing away or getting dropping on the floor and then my little deodorizer is up in here i made a little strap for that too so that it holds it in place and i just press that down and it wedges right in there ain't going anywhere okay so those are the tips of the day for the outhouse and always keep your um, clock in the outhouse set at 6.30, because if you fall in, you're in deep six, right? <laughs> Another barely joke. <laughs> All right, so we got that done. I got to head down to the um, greenhouse and garden house, and I've got to show you something that I noticed. And I noticed it a couple of days ago, but I thought I was hallucinating. I thought somebody uh, dropped a Mickey in my beer or something. So I was a little weird about it. And I said, well, let's see what happens. And I got to show you this. Yeah, I'm walking as fast as I can. Well, no, I'm not. I'm walking as fast as I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Hey, I'm barely there. <laughs> oh, another bear joke. Oh, sometimes I'm so punny. All right, so... Here's what I noticed in here the other day. Oh, look, I dumped a whole bunch of chicken poop in here because I'm gonna be filling this up with uh, all this garden soil, but the chicken poop will be, get spread out in a nice even layer through the whole area. I'll put a couple more buckets of it in there, and that is great fertilizer to add to your soil. Of course, it probably doesn't need it with this, this uh, Kellogg soil. Is, it's already got fertilizer mixed into it. It's just really healthy stuff. Anyway, here's what I was talking about. Look what I found on my peach tree. A peach blossom. Wow, isn't that something? And there's, it's not the only one. I mean, I've, there's another one popping up right here. There's a couple of them on here. And I can't believe it. It's still December. It's not even Christmas yet. This tree has got green leaves on it. It's got fresh sprouts coming out of the, the trunk new branches coming on and it's got peach blossoms on it just totally amazing the pear of course is going into its fall colors in the middle of winter go figure <laughs> i made this cover for my um tangerine tree this is mandarin tangerine to pr prevent it from freezing this winter so that it gets an, a good start at getting stronger and bigger this year that peach tree over there lost a lot of its leaves, but some of them are looking healthy like they're coming back. And I think I see, I'm going to have to go over here and check it, but I think I see, where was it? Oh, uh, no, maybe not. I thought I saw a peach blossom on this one too, but I don't. Just my imagination once again, running away with me. All right, so this has got little blooms on it. This is my pear tree. It's showing signs of wanting to jump into spring. And yes, this is from the rootstock that the pear tree was grafted to, and it's apple. So I've got an apple tree growing and a pear tree growing coming out of the same rootstock. Now, I'm not sure what the quality of apples is gonna be, but heck, I'm gonna let it grow and we'll see what happens, because this is also part of the um, apple tree. And you see the difference in the, um, the trunk. It's got a reddish color to it, not a gray color like the pear does. So, interesting stuff. Anyway, let's move around down here. And uh, has anybody spotted a pack of seeds yet outside when I was walking around? Huh. I wonder where I put that thing this time. You know, sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and I walk in my sleep. Oh. 
I'm not going to go into the greenhouse, but there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in there, including, I guess, transplanted the uh, tomato sprouts. And uh, I got those all uh, into bigger pots so that they can grow. And I'll be fertilizing those tomorrow. And we'll see what else uh, could do with that. Oh, yeah. I want to go over to the chicken coop and uh, collect my eggs while I'm down this way. And uh, we'll get to say hi to the girls and the kids. All right, they're over here. Is everybody outside? Is everybody playing? Oh yeah, you're all hunkering down in the corners there. But it looks like one of you might be inside. Well, let's go see if she is. If she is, I won't collect eggs right now. I'll collect them a little later. I don't want to disrupt them. But this is my egg collecting basket, and I call it my mini pearl basket because it still has its uh, price tag on it. I got this in a thrift store. So I'll be using that to collect the eggs. Let's see what we got going in here. Oh no, there's nobody inside. All right, so I can collect my eggs. I had to put that board there so the wind wouldn't blow this away. And let's see. Oh, I've got a nice egg. Nice eggs. All right. Yeah, real nice eggs. Beautiful. There's my three a day. So we're all set. And those are ceramic eggs in there. Those help pr promote egg laying. And they're doing their job all right. So we're all set. I'm going to have to come back out here and put some uh, layers crumbles in their nighttime feed trough to make sure that they have plenty of food. And I already changed their water and cleaned the coop and that stuff. So that's all done. I want to thank you all for joining me on this episode. I hope you got a look, good look at the, uh, the location of the seed pack with the metal clip on it. And uh, then you got a good look at the seed pack to see what type of seeds they were. And get your number two and number three entries in there. This is G-Bear signing off.